another great guest speaker for you uh, from WBNS Channel 10 TV, originally from Chicago, uh, has been in Columbus since 95. And uh, once she arrived in Columbus, she never looked back. But I'm going to let her tell you her story. Please give an OCB welcome to Maureen Kosai. Thank you. More love than I get at work. Um, just before we get started, I'm just really curious, how many of you are interested in the news side of this industry? And how many of you are more interested in the entertainment side of this industry? And how many of you have no idea where you're going from here? Entertainment. 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 Yeah. News. Cool. What, what, what's your interest? Like for sports. Sports? Yeah. It's, it, sports is a lot of fun. You need to come hang out in our sports department. It's a good time. <laughs> well, look, no matter where you guys are heading in this industry, you know, the, the crazy thing about my business is how fast it's evolving and growing as we enter the social media. I mean, even in the, I've been here 16, almost 16 years, Dale. He was... He was a veteran when I showed up on the scene. Um, and it's just instantaneous now. You know, it, it used to be get to the scene, you go live, it was fast. Now it's, it's right now. I, you get to the scene, you don't even know what's happening. You, you haven't even found the white hat to find the battalion chief to ask him what's going on. And you're supposed to have a photo. You're supposed to get it on the web. You're supposed to write a story. You're supposed to tweet. You're supposed to Facebook. You're supposed to put a picture on Facebook. You're supposed to put a bit on the tweet. On the <laughs> and then you can find someone and I say, hey, what's going on? Uh, it's, it's, it's really fast and it's ever evolving and there are so many opportunities to be first, but it, you can't just be first, you have to be right. So there's a lot of pressure uh, to know what you're doing and uh, you know, to make it work, I guess. Um, I actually got into this business just like this. Had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I knew I loved writing. I thought I was interested in creative writing. Um, heard someone in the industry speak and thought it sounded like a cool profession and I'm here to tell you guys it's a cool profession um, but regardless of whether you want to go on the entertainment side you know work work a radio station you want to go into news it is not glamorous <laughs> my first job I literally was qualified for food stamps which I didn't find out until after the fact I was still bitter about that um, I mean you work some bad hours I, I, I get up at 2 30 in the morning every day I have four stepkids. It's busy in my house. You work holidays, you work weekends, you work overnights, you make little pay when you start out, and th th those are the facts. Um, and you get some really unhappy assignments. I mean, you get to go knock on someone's door literally 20 minutes after you uh, get the list of passengers on the plane crash and find out one of them lives in your town. Um, that's not an easy thing to do. Uh, and I'm telling you right now, regardless of where you want to be in the business, the most important thing you can do, you don't even need to learn inside the walls of this building. You need to learn how to engage people and talk to you about anything. The guy in the convenience store at the gas station, you know, the, the person uh, selling you a, a t-shirt at Kohl's. Learn how to engage people, learn how to talk to people, learn how to get them to talk to you. I mean, I literally on a daily basis will go to someone's home whose son was murdered the night before. I have to walk into, the, into that neighborhood, go up to that door, ring the doorbell, find someone who's in horrible pain, grief, introduce myself, convince them to let me come into their home, sit down in their territory, pull out photos of this person they're grieving for, share their story with me, <laughs> you got to be able to, to talk to people. You got to be able to let people see who you are. You got to be able to let people in. You got to be open. You've got to earn people's trust right now. And it doesn't matter if you're, you know, interviewing a celebrity or if you're interviewing someone for a news story. That is, I'm telling you, that is 90% of the game. Learn to engage people. Learn to, if you open up, if you share, if you're sincere, if they see that, they'll get back. People will, will give you their stories. That's probably the most important knowledge I could impart to you today. Um, I don't want to go on and on and, and lecture you. I, I'm sure a lot of you have a lot of questions, and I, um, I, I want to give you an opportunity to ask those. Um, but I do want to tell you, now that I've said the serious stuff, it's a lot of fun. No matter where you go to work, if you're at a radio station, if you're in a newsroom, it's family. You're all in it together. And uh, there's, 
no such thing as I want to be a photographer, I want to be a producer, I want to be on air. I, you you got to do it all this day and age. Um, if you're in class and they're teaching you how to run the camera and how to shoot creatively and how to not you know cross the line, pay attention because 99% of the television stations out there right now are hiring people who can do it all, the one man bands. And even if they can't, don't get in a car with a photographer and clearly have no clue what's going on and not care. Because your relationship with your photographer, your relationship with your producer, your relationship with your engineer, uh, those are the people who have your back. They can make you look good, they can make you look bad, and you better respect what they do and have an understanding of what they do. And you should expect the same thing from them. So pay attention. Even if you're in classes that aren't your focus or your interest, pay attention and learn because the people that are interested in that are going to be your best friends in the future. <laughs> um, and we do have a lot of fun. We really do. Um, we were, Minter and I were talking about this a little bit earlier that it can get really stressful. There are a lot of tapes flying in the newsroom. There are a lot of F words flying in the newsroom. There are emotional breakdowns. There are tear fests in the girls' restroom and we go, oh man, what's wrong? I mean, it's, it's a very emotional business. It's a very high-stress business. The deadlines are intense. Um, sometimes the content is intense. I mean, I spent a week covering 9-11, living on Oreos and Doritos and Mountain Dew and, you know, um, sleeping in the truck. You know, that's, if you're not a family after that, you're never going to be. So, but, but it's also an opportunity. You have some life-changing experiences in this industry. You meet people from all walks of life. You're going to meet people who have had things happen to them that you can't even imagine. You're going to hear stories and think, you can't make this up. <laughs> and you get to tell people stories. And it's a lot of fun. And it's, it can be a very creative process. Um, I do want to show you one piece of news that we just did for two reasons. One, because it just won the regional Edward R. Murrow, and I'm really proud of it. But I want you to watch how we sold this before we even started. This was a one-hour documentary called it Saving Sarah. Are any of you familiar with a story that happened last year about a guy who abducted a little girl, killed her mother, her brother, the neighbor, chopped them up, hid them in a hollow tree? I mean, you, right? I mean, is this crazy? I, I'm on the phone the day this is all unfolding. I got my FBI agent source on, telling me they're in a tree. <laughs> and I, I couldn't bring myself to s report it. Like, I was like, this can't be true. You're, they're in a tree, they're in a tree, they're in a tree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, um, and what I want you to learn from this is that we're all really good at reporting the story when it happens and it's exciting and then it's over and you move on to the next story the next day. If you stick with it, if you develop relationships with the characters, if you take your time, if you go back a year later, two years later, sometimes that's where the real story is. Sometimes that's where you really get the get. This was a one hour special. Um, and I just wanted to share a little bit of it with you. Oh, Rob, well, I'm for sure. So when you know you images and topics are graphic. Viewer discretion is advised. We are following breaking news tonight in northern Knox County. Deputies just got a search warrant to go into a house there to search for clues of a missing family. One year ago, a story unfolded in Knox County, a story that captivated Central Ohio. A mother, her son and daughter, and a family friend vanished from this home. It just doesn't happen in Mount Vernon normally, you know? And you don't think of this, but it's happening. A community and its sheriff's office began an investigation that would consume every waking hour. Four days into the search, a break in the case as SWAT surrounded this home. So it wasn't like a, sh a gunshot, but it was like a blast. I thought, well, maybe it was a car wreck. In the basement, bound and gagged on a bed of leaves, 13-year-old Sarah Maynard was found alive. This man, Matthew Hoffman, stood accused of kidnapping, and soon, much more. We have uh, discovered and recovered uh, the remains of uh, Cody Maynard, Stephanie Sprang, and Tina Herman. Murdered, dismembered, and found in the bottom of a hollow tree. Now, one year later, the story that rocked this small Ohio town and made headlines across the country. Tonight, investigators opened the case files to 10TV. I think the only uh, thing we had to go on was there was one footprint. The stories unheard until now. The sheriff who fueled a nonstop manhunt for a madman and the investigator who led the way. A lesson to be learned from this tragedy. Evil was everywhere. I don't think he grew up, got up that morning saying, today I become a monster. 
The race to bring Sarah home. Their words, their pictures, and their haunting memories. Walk down the hallway and there's, there's, there's blood trails uh, everywhere. From the mother of convicted murderer Matthew Hoffman. Anybody that can be critical does not have any idea what their children might do someday. To an inside look at the leaf-covered house and dark basement where he held his victim hostage for days. And the young woman whose life was forever changed when she came home from school on that November day. I just saw blood and like the dog wasn't in his cage. Sarah Maynard shares her story of survival. He came out and then grabbed me and then um, I got away. What happened next? You'll hear in Sarah's own words, the story she wanted to tell. The story of saving Sarah and the Knox County tragedy one year later. I just wanted to show you that because obviously it's a good sell. We put a lot of effort into that. Regardless of whether you're in entertainment or news, the most important thing is your character. And there's so many characters in this story. There's the killer's mom. You already, I mean, do you care about her now? Sarah, of course, we care about her. But then the investigators. We never knew how they knew Sarah was alive. There was one bloody footprint going out of the house in the child's shoe. She stepped in the blood when he took her out to the car. That's the only reason they knew that she walked out of that house. We didn't know that for a year. Um, those investigators did an amazing job of finding her and saving her. The point is, is that whether you pick up a book, whether you're watching a film in the theater, whether you're telling a news story, you know, if I don't care about the person you're talking about, you, I'm, you already lost me. I don't care. I don't know him. <laughs> it didn't happen to me. And so that's the character development is 90% of your job. Any, if you're interviewing a celebrity on the radio, if you're, you know, talking to the guy at the local business that's, uh, you know, having the, the big party that weekend that's trying to get your listeners to come out and join you for your radio st station promotion, you've got to get people to care about the person you're talking to. You've got to find that human connection that makes them interested in what you're doing. You've got to remember, when you're putting stuff on TV, when you're putting stuff on the radio, you get to hear it one time. You've got to speak in simple sentences. It's got to be subject, verb object. You can't be complex. You can repeat yourself. You can say it and then you can let the person you're interviewing say it. Um, goes by fast and there's a lot of information. But doesn't this look like this was fun? I mean in a really sick, you know, I have, I have a lot of issues on the journalist way. I mean it was really fascinating to go back a year later and put all these pieces of the puzzle together and learn all this stuff. I mean everyone's interested in this story but to learn how they cracked the case, to learn how they found out, you know, this was a, a really amazing thing uh, to, to be involved in, and, and I just kind of just I just want to give you an idea of you know some of the really amazing projects that you'll get to work on if you stick with it, if you persevere. If this is something that you really want, um, man, the sky's the limit. There's a lot of real. I mean, I've been on the red carpet in L.A. for the Oscars. I've been to 9/11. I've you see a lot of things in this business. You have a lot of life experiences that shape you as a person. I mean, Angela Ann went and you know, covered the devastation in Japan, um, went to the typhoon. Uh, we had crews that got to travel to Calcutta to meet Mother Teresa before she died. I mean, it's just amazing opportunities, and you never know when, when your number's going to come up. But when it does, you know, you, you really do have some amazing experiences. What are your questions? Don't be shy. Yes. When you do emotional stuff like that and all the other stories that you talked about, how do you not get, how do you still do the job? Um, boy, I wish I had it politically correct answer for that. You get a really thick skin. You do. And I'm not going to say that I don't ever feel for my victims. Um, I, you know, when I get done interviewing the mother of a homicide victim, I hug her. I give her my cell phone number. I sit and talk with her. Um, I, I try to be very compassionate. I try to be very empathetic. I mean, you know, sometimes you're out at scenes and you and the homicide guys have to check yourselves because you're out there laughing and, you know, there's a body in the street. I mean, you, you do develop a really thick skin, and the more bad stuff you see, the thicker your skin gets, I'm afraid. I mean, it, it's not to say that you don't care about people. I mean, that's, that's why we, we did this. We thought it was so wonderful that those investigators saved her. We wanted to give them credit where credit was due. And I think for Sarah, it was really healing to share her story. 
Um, I think that to, it kind of almost empowered her. You know, it was no longer something that was um, a story that was uh, forced upon her. It became her story to tell. Uh, it, it was, I think, a very healing process for her. Um, but uh, yeah, you just kind of, it becomes a, a day, a day's work. It really does. And you learn that, uh, <laughs> I tell you something you do learn in this business. You learn that life is fleeting. Uh, you learn that the things that you think are problems really aren't that big of problems. You'll hear your friends complain and think, and this is a true story. I literally sat in court all day one day, and this is pretty gruesome, so sorry if I offend anyone, but it, it was a true story. It was a case in Columbus of an 18-month-old child that was sodomized to death. I sat and looked at photos in court all day. It was bad. That one got to me. And I go home and listen to my mother call and complain because my Aunt Marie said something about my cousin Gina's boyfriend and Aunt Angel is very unhappy. And I'm thinking, oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> I have this big Italian family. We're all up in each other's business. Um, you really do, really, this, this, in, this industry can give you a lot of perspective on life. So you can, when you get home, it is a switch that you mm -hmm. just, you, you have to turn back off and turn back what's so-called what people think is normal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I just think it gives you perspective in life. It really does. You, uh, one of my favorite things to say to people is, you only think you have problems. Come with me. I'll, sh I'll introduce you to some people who have problems, you know. How, uh, how f I'm sorry, go ahead. How many dangerous positions that ha have you, I'm quite sure you encounter a lot of things being out in the city and the streets all day, but how many things or how many times have you been close? Um, that's a really good question. Yeah, there's there's a lot of judgment calls. I believe how reporters have guns pulled on them. And they're the first to usually get it. And you know, I mean, let's face it, you're going out to people's homes when they're they're most volatile, they're most emotional, and they want someone to blame, and it's usually me. And I'm good at taking the blame. Um, I've, I've, I actually, and it's funny, it was like really my first year in the business um, with Myron Bennett. I still remember the photographer's name in Champaign, Urbana, Illinois. Uh, we went, uh, we were, police were going to arrest a homicide suspect and I knew the guy tipped me, hey we're going to take this guy into custody, this is the address, just go a block down and then when they when they catch him, you know, I'll call you and then you can come up and get video. I'm like, oh that's awesome, you know, right. So, um, so they got the warrant, they're going to arrest this guy and so we see this farmer's field with like the little turn off, you know, they can ride their right. combines, I don't know. Um, so we pull in there and this guy comes flying up behind us in a pickup truck and he's enraged and we're trespassing and um, I said, oh, sir, I'm, I'm sorry. And I explained to him what was going on, and, you know, we're actually waiting for the police. They're getting ready to arrest. The suspect was his son. Oh. Oh. Apparently my story did little to appease him. <laughs> and he, he pulled out a shotgun and literally held us at shotgun and called the cops on us because we were trespassing. I'm like, I'm pretty sure kidnapping with a deadly weapon is going to trump trespassing, <laughs> sir. Um, Call them, tell them where we are, please. <laughs> and you know, but a lot of times, I mean, you know, really, when when you get sent out on stuff, nine times out of ten, the police are there, and and you know, you'll learn to develop relationships with your staff who are going to trust your judgment. That say, hey, when the police go, we go. Um, I did three internships uh, when I was in college, and here's the thing: you have to look at it as you're not working for them for free. They're providing you with. Free photographers, free editors, free top of the line equipment. You are getting that free resume tape, and it can be really pretty if you keep your mouth shut, mm -hmm. pre you're appreciative, you keep your ears open, and you're humble, and you say, Look, I I'm really trying to get a tape out of this. Can I ride with you today? Can I go out in the field with you? Um, yeah, can I just watch? And, and then after you've gone out with a photographer a couple times, you're like, yeah, Man, I know you've been shooting all day, but could you shoot stand up for me? Yeah, just, just help me. Like, will you help me do a good one? <laughs> and they'd be like, yeah, man, here's what we're going to do. And then pretty soon you got like this seven part stand up and like there's fireworks going off in it. And you're, t <laughs> and you're pointing to the monitor and then you're in the monitor. And <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we've got some really, really creative photographers who can do some amazing stuff. Now you got all this digital editing and I, you know, they can have me flying in the air if they want to. Um, take advantage of that. And again, network. Get to know people. You know, when you, when you get an internship, chat with people, get to know the people in the newsroom, they are the people, or in the radio station, I keep saying newsroom, sorry. Um, I mean, they're the people that are going to help you get that first job. They're going to say, you know what, our, our uh, assistant producer just took a producer job in Sioux Falls, Idaho, and they need three reporters there. 
I'll call her and send her your tape. You know, that's how, that's how you're going to get your foot in the door. So don't, don't really rise to the interest and think, oh, man, what a waste of time. This sucks. You know, it, it, it doesn't. Um, that is really where you're going to be able to create an opportunity for yourself to get your foot in the door. But again, you've got to be engaging. You can't just be a little fly on the wall and be like bored because we don't have anything for the interns to do. What am I going to do? Yeah, here, call the FBI and uh, get all the information for me and I'm going to um, go put my makeup on. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, we find some tasks for you guys to do. And there's, you know, I mean, I can say, hey, call every, you know, investment attorney in town until you find somebody who will talk to us about what to do with your tax return, you know. But, I mean, you're going to find a lot of free time when you internship, you know, when you intern. And when you do, man, get, talk to people, get to know people, shoot, shoot stand-ups. Ask editors, will you help me re edit a resume tape? Will you help me put it together? They're going to edit something so much better than anything you can do with your limited experience. Take advantage of the professionals who have won Emmys, who have won Edward R. Murrow's, who have won AP awards. I mean, they are at your disposal. All you have.